quite a day. I've just been clearing up around Brutus, getting rid of all the bits and pieces. I've got a, a wheelbarrow full here of stuff to throw away. These are all the bits that couldn't be saved. And everything that's in there has all been remade and galvanised. And he's looking lovely. But still not finished. If you want anything, you better be in quick because it's off to the dump tomorrow. I've had a shower and I'm clean and I'm ready to hit the job that I've been dreading for a little while. And that's removing all of the steel work from the inside of the body. I've taken all the rivets out around the edges. And now it's time to take it apart. Brutus is the 1983 Land Rover Stage 1 V8 that I found languishing in a paddock, seeing out the rest of his days while he quietly rusted. So after a little bit of negotiation with uh, Greg the farmer, I brought him home and I'm Otherwise, about halfway through a full restoration. The main thing I want to do first of all though is get Brutus running get him on the road so I can find out how he is mechanically. So I've been concentrating on the rust and of course the fact that he had no brakes whatsoever. After living on the beach for so many years the brake pipes had rusted clean through and all the fluid had returned to nature. So um, yeah, the, I'm very lucky because the chassis was fully galvanised Brutus was built as one of five police vehicles used for right, incident work on New Zealand's two beaches that are actually public roads, 90 Mile Beach and Murawai Beach. Now I can get some accurate measurements off these and get some decent galvanised sheet and make replicas of these from scratch. This special build included a galvanised chassis, full rust proofing throughout the uh, metal parts of the vehicle and stainless steel bolts holding the floor together. All really good ideas and all worked well for quite some time. Well, first job I've got to do is separate it down to each component then I can concentrate on what needs to be done to each component. I've just drilled out the spot welds and ground a little bit around here. They're still quite firmly held together. But the rust, the rust has done a fairly good job of pulling it apart, but I've got a splitting chisel here, very thin. I'm not particularly sharp, but designed for getting between pieces of panel work and pulling them apart. Tickle with that. But 30 odd years of a life living and working on the beach has um, taken its toll. Most of the small parts have crumbled beyond recognition. Some of the really small parts have disappeared completely. So I've been faced with making a lot of parts on this rebuild. The hard work's coming to an end. It's the front that seemed to have taken most of the salt uh, down the back end. Being a wooden um, tray back Land Rover, there's not a lot of uh, things to rust. All I'll be doing down the back is replacing brake lines and cleaning up the diff and springs.
Right. Now I need to take some accurate measurements of the folds in these three items and whip over to the next town and use my mate's press brake to manufacture some new ones. Actually, do you know what? I'm going nowhere. Um, damn daylight saving. I didn't realise it's uh, 6.30 in the evening. Everybody's home having their tea and watching the idiot box. So I can't go over there now and do that job. So I'm going to busy myself this evening by rebuilding the end of this rear brace so that it looks like this end of the rear brace. I won't bother sandblasting this just yet, although it will clean up beautifully. When it's sandblasted, I'll get it galvanized, and then it can be attached to the rest of the piece that I make up after I've um, been and used this press brake. Right, you'll see what I've done here is cut a piece of wood to fit on the inside of here. That's so that I can use that wood to support these pieces while I tack weld them together and that will give me the same finished outside measurement as I already have on the genuine article. And that means that when I weld the two together there won't be a hideous bump. It will be virtually undetectable. So here we go, it's assembly time. Here's where it starts to get important that I get my left and right correct. So that's my long, which is there, and now this is going to have to get folded the other way. What I'm doing is only very subtle, but it just means that when I'm grinding up the weld, I won't have to grind too much off to be able to get that rounded effect. Underneath the weld, I'll have the beginnings of it already. I'm going to be doing it with a combination of the hammer and pliers, just bringing it over a wee way, and then I'll do the same with the edges of the strip that goes down the top. Just the beginnings of a curve. There you go, it's as subtle as the B in the middle of that word. You wouldn't know it was there unless you looked for it. 
Now, on the strip, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tease the edges over. <laughs> I should have done it while it was straight. That's okay. When you start putting folds in metal, it's incredible how it changes the dynamic. And something that is very, very thin and flexible can be stiffened up considerably just by putting a little folded lip on the edge. It doesn't even have to be at 90 degrees. Okay. Now what did you folks do over the Christmas break? I hope you got to hang out with loved ones and family and eat a little bit too much and have a good time. My 30 year old daughter is the only person that I've got handy around here and of course my grandkids and her husband but they went to the far north to Matt's parents for Christmas. So they were up purely by coincidence to a place that was only just a few kilometers away from where I picked up this rusty vehicle, Brutus, from. Five hours drive from here for me to go and buy a vehicle and it turns out that it's pretty much in the next road to my daughter's husband's parents' place. How about that? Right, so I've got the beginning of my curve. I'm now going to push this curve into it. And now I can start this business. Set these up nicely, get some tack welds on them. These two points are my datums, that's what has to line up. I'm going to have to sneak three millimetres off the side of this and re-roll that line. This bench guillotine, which is normally bolted to the bench, but I opt to just hold it in the vise. Next to my angle grinders is probably my used, most used tool. I use it every day. Hardly a day goes by when I don't use it. I've never sharpened it since I bought it. I just keep it lubricated. Um, handles aluminium well, which is a bit of a soft, gooey metal. It uh, cuts, I shouldn't say spring steel, but you know those steel straps that come wrapped around bundles of heavy industrial stuff like steel. It'll cut through those easily enough. Cuts through any sheet steel. 
gives a nice straight cut. Yeah. Yeah, turning into it, yep, reasonably high for tacks, so that I get a good strong tack. But if I was to completely weld at this amperage setting, I would blow holes in it. I reduce it by about 20% as soon as I've got the thing tacked in as many places as needed. So the first thing I do is get the two ends lined up. tap it down so that it's touching all the way along and I get a tack on the other end and then I can sneak some tacks in the middle So there we are, fairly close, nice little curve, and there and dress that off, and we'll end up with something that looks surprisingly like that, I hope. Right, come and have a look and I'll show you what I just did. There you go. A tack on either end to start, and then you can work with a hammer and fill in the middle and get the pieces close together. Now I'll tack up the other side. And here, and then we can do two seam welds, and the whole thing, when it's dressed up, will look fairly convincingly like one piece of metal. The more tacks you get, the more you can bring the pieces in. But you don't start at one end and work your way along because it can wander and you'll never get your ends lined up. So one end, then the other, then work on bringing the sides together. Something I really enjoy about doing restoration work is that 
on the panel side of things, it's not very often that you have to do the same job twice. Everything's got its own challenges. And there are tools that you use, but there's also a huge range of formers. And sometimes you need a hard former, sometimes you need a soft former. So you do end up making a lot of stuff on the spot. Whether it's a piece of wood or a leftover chunk of steel from a tow bar or a little bit of angle iron, they've all got their uses. I know that the infrared's not going to come through your screen and burn your eyes, but let's have it. <laughs> that was the uh, vibrating camera fall transition. You won't find that on every um, editing software. Right, now I'm forming the bottom plate. I'll just check all the degrees of bentness and measurements, radius the corners and get each individual piece ready, and we'll weld it together. Because it's been holiday times, I've been doing a lot of disjointed work. I've done a little bit on this and a little bit on that, but I haven't really got my teeth into anything yet and finished it. So you're going to be seeing a flurry of activity over the next few videos as I finish off three or four really cool jobs that I've been working on on Brutus, the V8 Land Rover who spent 12 years parked in a field. Right, it's 10 o'clock at night. It's taken me about two and a half hours to do it, but I'm really happy with it. As soon as I get all this sandblasted and get it primed up, that's going to look just like the other side. <laughs> 